Welcome to the MSI channel where I try to resurrect an old MSI 8080 computer. This is the MSI 8080 out of the garage. Actually, was up in the rafters of the garage since about 19. Uh, I think it was put up there around 1985, 87, maybe at the latest. Anyway, uh, if people haven't seen an MSI 8080, it's the one uh, that was in the movies, uh, the War Games, and um, it has the front panel switches. It was basically the second computer. The Altair was first, and then the MSI. Altair was kind of a hobbyist. The MSI was really a, um, meant for commercial application. And uh, I think a lot of people have seen the outside and uh, I've seen people maybe throw the switches. Um, but I don't think many people have seen the inside, so let's, let's go there. Okay, let's pull some cards out, take a look at them. Um, the uh, first card we'll look at here is the um, CPU. And like I said, it has a um, connector on the side here, uh, which connects it to the front panel. And that's to uh, halt the processor and uh, single step it. Allow to have, allow the uh, front panel to take control over the bus and things like that. Uh, it's a simple card. It's got the 8080 microprocessor, um, a few support chips, and the boards all have their own regulator. So there's an unregulated 8 volts uh, DC that runs on the bus and then you pick up that 8 volts and then each card has its own um, 7805 regulator and a bunch of uh, decoupling. Away you go. Uh, the next card is the uh, extender card. Pretty simple. Uh, very nice to be able to extend the card up and uh, work on it with an oscilloscope, figure out what's going on. Uh, the next card we'll be looking at is the uh, one of the memory cards. Uh, this particular memory card is a uh, 38, I mean a 32K uh, memory card. And let's see if I can read these chip numbers. Uh, these are the C2108s. So these are 4K by 1. So 4, 8, 16, 32, no, how does that work? Uh, should be 8K, right? 8K by 1. 8, 16, there we go. 16 over here, 16 over here, that gets you the 32. Okay, and um, what else does this have? This is dynamic memory, uh, so it has a lot of uh, decoupling caps. Uh, the dynamic memory was quite noisy and um, a dynamic memory controller chip to refresh the, refresh the memory. Next card is a 16K module. Um, a little simpler design. Um, I believe this is static RAM. And uh, again, uh, all of the uh, uh, voltage generation on on board and uh, these things were power hungry back in the day they did take a lot of a lot of current each board is addressable to where you would like to have it set within the uh, address scheme of the 64k and uh, these have four banks and each bank has its own memory address and you can see these kind of count uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, and little dip switches. And the next card uh, picks up after that. 4, 5, 6, 7. Looks like some memory chips went bad and were replaced. Uh, next card is the serial, serial I.O. card. Um, this is the uh, SIO, so this is the serial connector, and there's a PIO, so these are two parallel ports. So we have one serial port that allows you to talk to the uh, video terminal, and then uh, two parallel ports, um, which were used for the printer, uh, Centronics printer. There's a t 
ton of jumpering on this board to configure it different ways. Uh, to be able to set baud rates, to be able to set parity bits and things like that. And the final card is uh, the disc controller card. Uh, the disc controller card um, was based off of a um, uh, particular chipset. I don't remember who makes those chips now. FD. I don't know if that was part of Western Digital or uh, somebody else at the time. But the uh, interesting part of this card is this boot ROM. Uh, this is actually assembler code uh, that's not assembler code, but uh, 8080 code that sits uh, on the card at address F000. And it is actually the boot section that allows you to boot CPM off of a um, floppy disk. So when you actually boot up uh, turn on the MSI, you actually have to set memory address F000 and tell it to run from there, uh, which will execute the code in this boot prom. The boot prom will then uh, load CPM from the disk and put it into memory, which starts at zero. All right, so I was nervous about bringing the power up on this thing uh, for the very first time. So actually off camera, uh, before I decided to start filming this, um, I put this thing on a variac and brought the voltage up very slowly while monitoring the current to make sure that there was no shorts or the capacitors hadn't shorted out. Um, and everything does seem to be okay. All right, so let's uh, power it up. There we go. So we get some LEDs. That's good. And uh, the LEDs are flashing. That's not a good thing. They shouldn't be flashing. They should be very steady. Uh, we can hit the reset. And it did do something, but again, you can see they have uh, some LEDs that are flashing. And watch this. So if I tap things, uh, we get lights going. So obviously there's, there's some connector issues. Um, I'm hoping that's probably the only thing wrong with this thing, is uh, taking all the thing apart, cleaning all the connectors, um, and putting it all back together. Hopefully we don't have any dead chips. But obviously there's some funny things going on. Uh, so right now I have the CPU in there and I have one memory card. Um, I believe we can get this memory card to address right now actually. So the way that we address is that we put in the address. There's a 16-bit address. If we put in uh, 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 1100 000 000 000 000 and say examine um, it will try to look at that address. And in fact, it lit up. So that actually is working. Uh, that's a good thing. Let's go one more. That's a good thing. Let's go to FFF. That's also a good thing. Okay. Now I believe this card should be addressing, but it looks like it's not. I believe this card is probably up around the um, in the F's, something like that. Let's try to get to it. Examine one, three. Nope. Nope. I like the way the lights are working, though. They're working correctly. If we did address the card, this LED will come on, uh, which it's not. Well, I've taken the cards out and uh, reinserted them. Uh, I haven't cleaned them, but I just kind of reinserted them. And I'm getting different behavior. I'm getting, uh, uh, this is examined next. Uh, so it is counting in the address, which is what it should be doing. Uh, it does seem to reset. Uh, there is a run stop. If we hit run, uh, it actually looks like it's doing something. We are getting uh, the memory card to, accept, to uh, address. Uh, so it's, uh, it's sick, but, uh, uh, not dead. Uh, definitely sick, but not dead. If we examine at 000, we get a particular code. Examine next. Uh, we can see if we can get the, uh, address to change, and it's not. Oh, we can't get something to deposit. Hmm. Well... Needs work.